Coming up, we're going to uh, be speaking with Martin Lipton about Spurs. We're going to get into the sports pages, rugby with Ronan O'Gara, talking Patrick Mahomes' new contract at around about 10 past nine this morning, and from half nine, talking Bryson DeChambeau, and a bit about Liverpool with uh, Nathan Murphy, our Premier League commentator. First, though, let's talk about Spurs and Jose Mourinho. I'm delighted to say Martin Lipton is with us. Good morning, Martin. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, very interested to see how this Spurs experiment is playing out. And... So far, you'd have to say that Jose Mourinho is doing very Jose Mourinho things at Spurs. Um, what's your assessment of how, how much progress he's made? Um, it's difficult to say how much focus has been made because there hasn't been a great deal, but nor has it gone backwards. I mean, if you take look at where he came in, they were 12 points behind fourth. Um, now they're seven points behind fourth, so you could argue there's been an improvement there. Um, he played three months without his main striker, most of that period without Son and Sissoko as well. Um, so, yes, there have been reasons and explanations, but they haven't looked convincing. They haven't defended particularly well. That's a lie. They haven't defended at all well. Um, they are lacking pace, and they are still, as a club, suffering from, well, I would argue, the 2018 World Cup, which was the biggest um, problem that Tottenham have faced because when they needed to make significant changes, the players they wanted out, they couldn't sell because they weren't around. And that was the first year of the sh of the short window when it shut in, in the 10th of or 8th or 10th of August. And those players were still basically on holiday at that point because they'd just come back from the World Cup. So those factors were, were huge and ignored and missed at the time. But I think Mourinho and Tottenham are still suffering from what happened two summers ago. How do they fix that? They get rid of some of the players and they start all over again. And that's a problem because, as we know, uh, finances are, are much tighter than, than they were. But we're going to get a change in, in some degree. We're going to see Tatongan go. He's one of those who has, has served the club extremely well when his time is, is now up. Um, they need pace at the back. They need a new right back. They need a new left back. They need a dominant centre-half. And they need a proper holding midfielder. If they get all of those then they'll be a significantly better team. But easy um, prescription, harder to actually write it out and, and, and get the stuff delivered. Uh, wh why weren't those issues that didn't go addressed in 2018 not addressed in the summer of 2019? And if Daniel Levy knew that those problems existed and it was personnel problems that needed to be existed, why wasn't Maurizio Pochettino trusted to be the man to start from the beginning once again? Because Pochettino has to hold some responsibility for it as well. And why did he not? Why did he actually want to quit last summer? Because he knew that team was shot to bits. He was going to make a significant change last summer, which was overdue. Uh, in the end, they didn't really do it, did they? They didn't um, strengthen at the back. They brought in Ndombele, who has been uh, a ghost figure, it's fair to say, most of this season. Um, it's a compound series of, of, of mistakes, and all of those who hold the decision-making uh, positions over the last few years. And I actually accept um, uh, Mourinho from that because he really wasn't involved. I mean, he did, January winners are always tough anyhow, so he's not to blame for that. that. They must take responsibility for it. Collectively, that's Pochettino and Steve Hitchens and Levy. What's Steve Hitchens' role? Is he the director of football? He was director of football, yeah. Right. And so it... I always wonder exactly who is making the decisions about what type of player, what's the profile of player, how much influence the manager has. Was that an issue with Pochettino? Did he have enough influence? Did he have too much influence? Do we know what that balance of power is? Look, clearly Pochettino had a huge amount of influence. And, oh, and let's be fair, he built Spurs from a team that used to aspire to 10th to one that aspired to winning the title. He did a fantastic job. Um, and if anything, he was just a little bit too loyal to players he probably should have discarded. Look, one thing I would say is there's no point in moaning about it now and wondering about it. It's like what happens next is more relevant and pertinent. And that will be difficult uh, because of the tight and financial straits that every club is in. But every club is in those straits. For Spurs, it's been slightly heightened by the fact that they were, you know, they, they looked to make six, five to six million pounds per home match. Um, at the best, they're going to end up missing six home matches. It's probably, it could be more than that. Uh, fans returning in September would have a huge impact on Tottenham, bigger than most clubs because of that high number. But they're not going to be in, in the Champions League. They're probably not going to be in Europe, which uh, if they're not in Europe, that's an 80 million hole. 
in income. If they're not in the Champions League, it's just a 50 million hole in income. They're going to have less money from finishing further down the league. So they have been severely struck by a poor season in one of the worst years. However, on the flip side, they are fundamentally a very sound business. They have the lowest wages to turnover percentile in uh, the Premier League, probably in major football, in the big five, because they're so well run financially that, yes, this will be a short-term issue, and they have this uh, £175 million loan from the Bank of England to repay at the most ludicrously low rates you'll know. So it actually costs them 800 grand, which I think they can swallow. Uh, they come back stronger, but they, have take, they will take a hit. Is Jose Mourinho the right man to steer the ship through this period of time? Because in the past, he's been notoriously uh, tetchy when it comes to not getting money to invest in the team. Yes, and that's why I've been extremely surprised by the way he's behaved. I thought by now, given what's gone on, it would have been, woe is me, it's a disgrace, the, the chairman's not doing his job properly, you know, Waitrose, eggs, all that sort of stuff. We haven't heard that, actually. So far, he's been remarkably well behaved. Um, and when he, his issues are with a couple of players, clearly Ndombele is one of them, but I don't think too many fans have got much... Uh, faith in Ndombele given that he didn't perform at any point this season and he's never been fit. He doesn't seem to want to play. Um, I, th I think he's been extremely well behaved. I don't think he's, well, he's got enough success out of the defence but then again they're not quick enough and I don't think you can you can't inject well unless you're a Russian doctor from the 1990s <laughs> you can't inject pace into people uh, and that's <laughs> therein lies the, the issue I think. He's got to sort that out. If he gets if he gets a proper right back with pace, a commanding centre half, a decent centre uh, holding midfielder, and a left back, now whether he does that, I don't know. Suddenly they look a completely different team. Is he the right man? I don't think anyone can tell you because we haven't really seen uh, enough. Um, but it will have to be next season. Again, it, it, whatever happens next summer, this summer, next season, he will be judged by that performance, irrespective of whether it's fair or not. That's the way it works. The, the Ndombele situation is interesting, Martin. It, it look, like you look at some of the clubs he's been linked with, Paris Saint-Germain, apparently his most likely suitor if he were to leave this summer, Barcelona potentially interested in him as well. And when you see reports coming out from inside the squad, when you talk about some of the most talented players within that Tottenham squad, apparently Ndombele is right up there. But you're saying that perhaps the player needs to take far more responsibility for what has gone wrong for him so far at Tottenham Hotspur rather than pointing the finger immediately at Jose Mourinho. It's two managers, it's 10 months, he hasn't done it. How many times has he played well? Be honest, how many times has he played well? Maybe once, maybe twice. Um, he's, not been, he's not made himself fit. He's never fit. It's ridiculous. I'm, and I'm sorry, that, I know there's issues. There was, you know, when told from France, there was this problem and that problem, it was that undiagnosed. Well, start telling people there's a problem. Um, stop looking for excuses. Sometimes take responsibility you're a grown man you're 22 23 you cost you on getting paid you know 150 200 grand a week show a bit um maybe it'll be great he'll go to um barcelona and be brilliant or go to psg and be outstanding spurs you know have sold players and regretted it in the past they've also sold players and thought they you know did the better out of it i can't see him having any future at tottenham the issue is now how much they get back from how much they lose of that 56 million. We've talked about the, the financial issues um, and the fact that they are well run perhaps means that they'll be able to um, do some kind of financial wizardry to be able to invest in the, in the team. Is there any prospect that they sell some of their actual prize assets to raise money for reinvestment and decide that this is going to be a period of retrenchment? It depends what you call the prize asset. I'm, I'm not sure that Lucas Moura has a long-term future, personally. I'm, I've never quite been sold on him. They paid £25 million for him. They could get some of that back. Is it time for Lamella to go? Maybe. I mean, he's been there for seven years now. What would they get for him? Maybe 25 They wouldn't get their money back. Who could they sell for money that they can afford to sell? Maybe. And I wouldn't... Um, say this is a great move, but maybe you could argue that Deli Alley might be saleable. Um, they can't sell Kane. 
absolutely can't. If they sell Kane, the message it sends out is horrendous. It tells everyone they're not interested anymore. Um, so, potentially, Ali, but wouldn't you want him if you can get him right because he'll score goals? I wouldn't want to lose him. I think it's difficult. They have to find a way. But sometimes you do have to make difficult choices to improve. And you may not, you know, Liverpool fans didn't want to see Coutinho go, but it certainly benefited them in the long term because of the way the money was spent. So if you can identify things that will improve the general mix, you've got to be willing to make those certain sacrifices. Let's see. But if you look across the squad, you'd probably say that Delhi is the one you might get money for, who you might be able to use that money for, and without hugely adversely affecting the team, but then you lose a lot when he goes, if he goes. In terms of Kane, right, is there any prospect that Mourinho's making the argument about Coutinho and saying, I have, I have a centre-back, a left-back, a right-back, and another striker that I can get for the 150 or 200 million that we'll get for Harry Kane now? No. If he sells Harry Kane, he doesn't get last one defeat before the fans demand his head and that of the, cha of the chairman, and he knows that. What if Harry Kane agitates for a move one day? Well, he will do one day. I don't think he will this summer. But if, look, I think if Spurs don't get back into the Champions League and really come close to winning something next season, Kane will want to leave. And I also think that no Spurs fan would really um, condemn him for wanting to leave. I think that there will be a view that he needs to go one more. Kane of, in himself wants to stay at Tottenham and beat Jimmy Greaves' scoring record. Mm. That's 266. Now, you know, that would take a minimum of two seasons, probably two and a half seasons, uh, realistically, if he stays fit and plays well. But if Kane leaves, he's going to score the goals. As simple mm. as that. You've got to find... You, you don't, it's not easy to replace a 25-goal-a-season man. Even this season, when he's supposedly not been playing that well, he has scored, um, I think, for club and country, 30 goals in 35 games. No. You know, this is in a so-called soft season, a poor season. Yeah, not bad. That's the, that's what it, that tells you what sort of play. Now, admittedly, most of those, there was, there's a lot of goals for England in that, six in, ten in six. Nevertheless, in for Spurs, he's, he's scoring goals. You know, he's, he's got 13 in the league and he's got another few in the, in the, Europe, in the Champions League, etc. He's a goal scorer. You don't replace them easily. I, I know we don't really know yet until we see next season what type of style of play, what type of team, whether or not he can fix the defence, whether or not Mourinho is the right manager. But there is definitely a profile of a manager who would give youth its chance in circumstances like this that you might be, if you were a Spurs fan, more invested in. You might have a bit more faith in a, a, a manager who was able to look at the reserve team, look at the youth team and go, OK, uh, I've, got, I've got players here who can play 10, 15 games a season for me who might become first team regulars over the course of the next 18 months or so. Mourinho's not really that type of manager, or certainly hasn't been in the past. Is there any prospect? Are there any other young players coming through at the moment who might get a chance under this Mourinho administration? I think if he'd been fit, Pallet would have been involved. But he's not fit. Uh, as we know, he didn't. he's had the operation. Um, they like Sirkin, the young boy who played, he's on the bench last night. Um, Still got to be some sort of faith in Sessignon for 25 million. Um, they've got a, f a few, but Spurs aren't particularly great at bringing players through um, from the youth team. You know, if you get, and, and to be honest, if you get one a year, you're doing well for most clubs. It isn't that many you get more than that. Mourinho knows it's a stick he's beaten with about young players, and I think it's a, a valid one. Or he says otherwise, and he will point to players from Varane onwards, from who he brought through, and, and he, but he, he's, he's very good at working out his calculations. I think if Mourinho doesn't work, they'll, the, the next manager will be a very different type of manager. Uh, and it will, they, they were keen on, on, um, on Brendan Rodgers. I think their sights would be trained at Julian Nagelsmann. Uh, because, or even the, the uh, American chap, uh, Marsh, at... Uh, uh, at the other Red Bull team in Salzburg, young and progressive, bringing young players through. I think that's what they may well look to do. But they bought or brought in Mourinho for a very different purpose. That was to start winning things. Uh, and therefore, he'll be judged pretty highly and tightly on whether he does that. 
that wasn't this season, that's next season. Uh, but as we know, next season starts very soon. Yeah, but really, really quickly. Um, Parrot had his appendix out. Is there? I mean, that was at the end of May. He could be back fairly soon. Will he? Will he get some game time before the end of the season? Do you think? <sighs> if he's fit, he probably will be involved. Yeah, because you've got nine nine players now on the bench. So therefore, there's a chance he'll he'll be on the bench if he's fit. But I don't know the state of of the boy. You would probably know more than I. Um, Mourinho likes him. He doesn't. He wasn't sure that he was physically strong enough to play uh, up front. The issue will be whether he goes on loan next season to build up his fitness and match strength, which might be a better shot, shout perhaps, and with, with less pressure on him than if you're at Spurs, or he stays around. But if they were to buy another striker, he'd be third in the pecking order. Mm. Um, you know, does he want that? I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Those, those conversations will have to take place. If I was having to put 50 pence of more, of, uh, of your money on it, I think that Parrot will go out on loan to play football next season. That probably makes sense from his perspective, and also if they can recall him, it makes sense as well from Spurs' perspective. Oh, yeah, you do it for it till Christmas, a three-month loan. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you expect them to have much money this summer? No, I don't think anyone's got much money this summer. But we don't know. Um, because also, one of the things is, if you, even if you have got money... You want everyone to think you haven't got a, a penny piece, yeah. <laughs> because otherwise you're going to be you're going to be held held up at gunpoint, particularly this summer. <laughs> so, I suspect there's a little bit more than Spurs are saying, but that doesn't mean there's a lot. They'll have to get free transfers in, uh, a couple of the holes. And um, they were very keen on Munier, who they've missed out on now. That would have been a good a good signing for the right back. They may have to go and spend, but Norwich's impending relegation means, for example, Aaron's becomes more available. Um, Southampton are resigned to losing Hoburg. The issue is the price. Let's have a little negotiation. Maybe you do a deal involving Carl Walter Peters staying at Southampton, for example, and that puts the price down by 10 million. Those are the sort of conversations that are, are likely to take place. Yeah, OK. Very interesting um, end of the season, a very interesting transfer window ahead of us. Martin, always great to talk to you. Thanks a million. No worries. Take care. Bye -bye. Martin Lipton there from the uh, Sun talking to us this morning at 8.40 here.